Hey everyone, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this week's video, I want to share with you my favorite tips and tricks for using the Curves Filter. And the Curves Filter is one of my all-time favorite filters in Photo Raw because it really gives me complete control of all of the different tones in my image. From my blacks, to my mid-tones, to my shadows, to my highlights, and everywhere in between, it's a really, really powerful tool for your photography. So let's dive in here and I'll show you some creative ways that you can use it. So now we're inside Photo Raw 2020. And before we start getting creative with our tone curve, let's just go over a few of the basics as a refresher. So we'll go into our effects tab here. I'll add a filter and we'll add the curves filter. So with our tone curve here, this first point on the bottom left is our black point. So this point is going to be modifying all of the black tones in our shot. So with this black point, we can do a few things. We can incorporate faded matte styles onto our shot and we can bring in some contrast. If we want to incorporate a faded matte look with the black point, all we have to do is click it and then drag it up. So that you can see by dragging this up, it's trying to bring out all of the exposure in those black points and that's going to create a faded look on your shot. We can also use the black point to create contrast within our photo. To do that, just pull it the opposite direction. Pull it to the right and now it's bringing in contrast and adding more dark onto the photo. The next area of tones on our tone curve is going to be our shadow tones. And this is the area between your black point, this far bottom left point, and then the middle of your tone curve. So I'm just going to drop a point right here, right in the middle, right where my mid-tones are, and then I'm going to drop a point kind of in the middle between. This area is going to be your shadow tones. And you can see that by pulling down and up on this, this is modifying the darker areas in the photo. My shadow tones. And then above that, we have our mid-tones. So this point, right in the middle area of our tone curve, this is going to be modifying your mid-tones. So if I pull up and down on this, this is modifying the middle grays and the skin tones in the photo in between the shadows and the highlights. And then above that, we have our highlight region. And the highlight region lives between your mid-tones and your white point. So if I drop a point right here in my highlights and I pull up and down, this is going to be darkening and brightening the lighter areas in the shot. And then we have our white point. And the white point works like your black point. So if I want to darken my whites, I can grab this and I can pull it down and it's going to darken the whites in the photo. If I want to make them really bright, I can pull this to the left and it will make those whites incredibly bright. So now let's go up and we'll just reset this here. And the first creative thing that I like to do with my tone curves is I like to create an S curve and that brings in some nice cinematic style to my shot. So with photos like this where we have nice overcast and evenly lit lighting, an S curve will work really awesome to bring in some nice style. So to create an S curve, we're gonna head down to the shadow tone area in our curve. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna drag it down a little bit. And you can see that by dragging this area down, it's creating contrast in the photo. Well, that's because we're darkening the shadow areas. So now that we've created that contrast, we can go up to our highlight region and our midtones, and we can create a point and then we'll just pull that up a little bit. And now we've created a basic S curve in our tone curve and if we turn this off and on here, that contrast and highlight boost, that's bringing in a more cinematic style to the shot. And you can always go into your S-curve and you can modify it by moving these to the right or to the left and down more. You could also incorporate maybe even a little bit of fade into your tone curve, like that. You could pull this up a little bit. So there's really an infinite amount of possibilities that you can use with your S-curve. But by turning this off and on, I really like what that does to add in a stylistic cinematic look onto the photo. Now, one thing you may notice when modifying your S curve is that you get really strong colors. The vibrance and saturation of the colors gets really strong really quick. And the reason that's happening is because you're darkening your shadows, which is going to increase contrast and that's going to darken the colors, making them more robust and rich. And at the same time, when you're pulling up on your highlights or your midtones, you're going to be brightening those same colors. 
So what we can do to combat that is we can go into our curves filter here. We'll click on our gear icon right there. And we'll go into our mode. And we're going to go down to luminosity. So by clicking this blend mode luminosity, this is going to apply this curves filter strictly to the luminance values in the shot. Basically, that means that this curves filter and whatever I do inside of it, it's only going to be modifying the luminance or basic tones in the shot. It's not going to be modifying your color. So if I go back into my blending options mode and I click on this, take a look at the colors on the shot. Do you see when I went back to the normal blend mode? how it brightened them up really significantly. Well, an easy way, again, well, if you want to dull down those colors or make sure that they're not really intensely strong, just go into your blending options, head down to luminosity, and now this curse filter is strictly applied to the luminance values in your shot, and it won't modify the colors. Another creative way that I like to use my tone curves for is to create really moody black and white images. So let's go in, we'll add a filter, and we'll add our curves filter here. So inside our tone curve, we have our all tab, which is going to modify all of the tones in the shot. And then we have these different channels. We have our red, our green, and our blue. So if we go into any of these channels here, we can modify these specific colors in these specific tonalities in our shot. So for example, if I wanted to bring in more red to the midtones in my photo, I could drop a point here in my highlights, a point here in my shadows, and then I could modify the reds in my midtones. Well, one thing I like to do is I like to use this with the blue in my photographs, especially with a blue sky like this, to create harsh contrast in my black and whites. So let's head over to our tone curve, and I'm going to click on the blue tab. So what I'm going to do with this photo is I'm going to click in my midtone point here, and then I'm going to go up to my highlight region, and I'm going to grab my blue, and I'm going to pull up on it quite a bit. So you can see that that's just incorporating a ton of harsh blue color onto the highlight region and some of the midtones in this photo. So if I turn this off and on now, I've brought in a ton of blue to the shot. Well, what I can do with this blue is I can add a filter. I'll add my black and white here. And now with this black and white, I can modify these colors to get a different response out of those tones of my shot. So for this blue slider, if I pull back on it, I have a lot more control with the blue tones and the highlights in this shot than I did if I were to turn this tone curve off. So by adding this tone curve and incorporating more of these specific colors into specific tones in my shot, I can modify my black and white a little bit more to get more out of the shot and the specific colors within it. So I can pull back really, really harshly on my blues here, and then I can go down and I can pull up on my reds and my yellows, and then I'll bring a little bit more life into the horses as well as the ladies riding them. Another creative way that I like to use my curves filter is I like to apply it selectively on my shot using radial and gradient masks. So if we want to modify this photograph and bring out some of the brightness and some of the midtones near the ring and really make that area pop, we can do that really easily by using our curves filter. So let's head into effects. I'll add a filter. I'll add a curves filter. And I'll head down into my curves filter and I'll just grab my midtone point And I'll just pull up on it probably right about there. And then I'm going to head down to my black point here, and I'll just add in a little bit of contrast, right probably there. So if I turn this off and on now, it does a great job of just brightening up the scene a little bit. So now if we want to focus the viewer's attention on the ring here, we can use our masking bug to apply this curse filter strictly to this middle area on the shot. So I'll hit M on my keyboard, that will grab me my masking bug. Now I'll head up to my shape menu here, and I'm going to choose edges. What that's going to do is that's going to apply this curves filter in the middle of my mask, and it's going to protect everywhere outside of it. So if I drop this down here on top of the ring, it's applying this curves filter inside of this mask, but it's protecting everywhere outside of it. So I'll just go ahead and I'll make this quite small, just to cover up the ring area a little bit. 
And then I'm going to feather it out quite a bit to make it a lot more natural. So now if I go over to my curves filter here and I turn this off and on, see how that brightens up this specific area right here and almost creates a vignette around this ring, really focusing the attention on the area right in the middle of our frame. You could also do the opposite if you're trying to create a vignette around something. So if I just remove this curves filter, I'll add a new one, and I'll head down and I'll pull back on the midtones now to darken. And then I'll pull up on this to create a little bit of a fade, sort of like that. And now I'll hit M on my keyboard. We'll head back up to our shape. And this time we're going to choose center. This is going to apply the curves filter outside of the mask and protect everywhere inside of it. So if I drop this down on the ring now, see how it's protecting this area but on the outside, it's applying that darkening curve. So now we can do the same thing. We'll pull this in really tightly. And then we'll just feather it quite a bit. And we've done sort of a similar look. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned about the curves filter and how you can use it creatively on your next photographs. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the latest On One videos in the coming year.